in which our protagonists, Anna and Levine, finally meet, and in which one of their tales comes to an end. Chapter 4 Lyov, who was married to Kitty's sister Natalie, had spent all his life in the capitals and abroad, where he had been educated and served as a diplomat. A year ago he had left the diplomatic service not owing to unpleasantness, he never had any unpleasantness with anyone, and gone to serve in the palace administration in Moscow in order to give the best education to his two boys. Despite the sharpest contrast in habits and views, and the fact that Lyov was older than Levine, they had become very close that winter, and had grown to love each other. Lyov was at home, and Levine went in without being announced. Lyov, wearing a belted house jacket and suede boots, was sitting in an armchair, a pince-nez with blue lenses on his nose, reading a book propped on a lectern, carefully holding out in a shapely hand, a cigar half-turned to ash. His handsome, fine, and still young face, to which his curly, shining silver hair lent a still more thoroughbred appearance, brightened with a smile when he saw Levine. Excellent! And I was about to send to you. Well, how's Kitty? Sit here. It's more comfortable. He got up and moved a rocking chair over. Have you read the latest circular letter in the Journal de St. Petersburg? I find it splendid, he said with a slight French accent. Levine told him what he had heard from Kitafasov about the talk in Petersburg, and, after discussing politics, told of his making the acquaintance of Metrov and going to the meeting. They all became very interested in that. I envy you your entry into that interesting world of learning, he said. And, warming to the subject, he switched, as usual, to French, which suited him better. Drew, I also have no time. My service and the children's education deprive me of that, and, besides, I'm not ashamed to say that my education is much too deficient. I don't think so, Levine said with a smile, touched, as always, by his low opinion of himself, by no means affected out of a desire to seem to even be modest, but perfectly sincere. Ah, yes, I feel now how little learning I have. For my children's education, I even have to refresh my memory a good deal and simply study. Because it's not enough to have teachers, there must also be a supervisor, just as in your farming you need workers and an overseer. See what I'm reading? He pointed to Beslive's grammar on the lectern. It's required of Misha, and it's so difficult. Explain this to me now. It says here... Levine tried to explain to him that one cannot understand it, but must simply learn it, but Lyov did not agree with him. Yes, see how you laugh at it. On the contrary, you can't imagine how, by looking at you, I always learn what's in store for me. I mean, children's education. There certainly isn't anything to learn, said Lyov. I only know, said Levine, that I've never met better brought-up children than yours, and couldn't wish for better myself. Lyov obviously wanted to restrain himself and not show his joy, but he simply beamed all over. As long as they're better than I am, that's all I wish for. You don't know all the trouble yet, he began, with boys who, like mine, were neglected in that life abroad. You'll catch up on it all. They're such capable children. Above all, moral education, that's what I learned from looking at your children. 
Moral education, you say? It's impossible to imagine how hard it is. You've just prevailed on one side when something else crops up and the struggle starts again. Without support from religion, remember, we talked about it, no father, using only his own resources, would be able to bring up a child. This conversation, which always interested Levine, was interrupted by the entrance of the beautiful Natalia Alexandrovna, already dressed to go out. I didn't know you were here, she said, obviously not only not sorry, but even glad to have interrupted this for her long, familiar, and boring conversation. Well, how's Kitty? I'm dining with you today. Now then, Arseny, she turned to her husband, you will take the carriage. And a discussion began between husband and wife about how they were going to spend the day. Since the husband had to go and meet someone to do with his work, and the wife had to go to a concert and public meeting of the Southeastern Committee, there was much to be decided and thought over. Levine, as one of the family, had to take part in the planning. It was decided that Levine would go with Natalie to the concert and the public meeting, and from there the carriage would be sent to the office for Arseny, and he would come to fetch her and take her to Kitty's, or if he was still busy, he would send the carriage and Levine would go with her. The man spoils me, he said to his wife. He assures me that our children are wonderful, when I know how much bad there is in them. Our Senny goes to extremes, as I would say, said the wife. If you look for perfection, you'll never be content. It's true what Papa says, that when we were being brought up, there was one extreme. We were kept in the attic while the parents lived on the first floor. Now it's the opposite. The parents go to the storeroom and the children go to the first floor. Parents mustn't have any life now. Everything's given to the children. Why not, if they like it? Leov said, smiling his handsome smile and touching her hand. Anyone who didn't know you would think you were not a mother, but a stepmother. No, extremes aren't good in anything, Natalie said calmly, putting his paper knife in its proper place on the desk. Well, come here now. You're perfect children, he said to the handsome boys who came in and after bowing to Levine, went over to their father, evidently wishing to ask him about something. Levine would have liked to talk with them, to hear what they said to their father, but Natalie turned to him, and just then Leo's colleague, Makatin, in his court uniform, came into the room to fetch him, so they could go together to meet someone. And now an endless conversation started about Herzegovina, Princess Korzynski, the Duma, and the unexpected death of Mademoiselle Aprakin. Levine quite forgot about the errand he had been given. He remembered it only on his way to the front hall. Ah, Kitty told me to discuss something about Oblonsky with you, he said when Leov stopped on the stairs, seeing his wife and Levine out. Yes, yes, I'm out once us, les beaux frères, to call upon him, he said, blushing and smiling. But after all, why me? Then I'll fall upon him. Natalie said, waiting in her white dog fur, rotund to the conversation end. Well, come along. If you enjoy this format, please leave a like and subscribe and return tomorrow for the next chapter.